Hello guys and welcome to this video to learn what to do when you have the first appointment with a patient and this patient was already taking some drugs due to existing medical treatments, okay? So this is very common and very important. So what to do in this case? The first key point we already have on our screen, we need to investigate the existing medical treatments and of course you are going to collect the medical history, just like the dental history, you are going to do your very nice clinical examination. Why we need to do that? Because the drugs are relevant because they may pose a threat. That's very important. We are going to talk about the main specific groups of drugs that will affect your dental treatment plan. And they may give insight about the medical condition of the patient and the medical condition itself can also have an impact on your dental treatment plan. So because of that, the dentist might need to take precautions and we are going to talk about the main ones. For example, the patients could already be taking NSAIDs or paracetamol due to the medical treatment. So now they are coming to your clinic and you are going to start a dental treatment. Maybe you want to prescribe NSAIDs or paracetamol, but they might be already taken due to a previous medical treatment. So you need to investigate this to avoid a very high dose of these drugs for the patient. Let's see now the specific situations. The main common ones are now on the screen and we have hypertension, diabetes and asthma. But luckily for us, these conditions, if they are controlled, they are usually not a contraindication for dental procedures. So take a look at this. This is very important, okay? However, for diabetes, for example, you need to make sure that the patient won't have a hypoglycemia because this can lead to an emergency. Don't forget to have devices to measure the uh, pressure, the blood pressure of the patient and to measure the glucose level of the patient as well. Those are very important electronic devices that you can have on your clinic and then you offer these measurements for the patient, all right? Don't forget also that asthma patients, uh, so patients that are using maybe bronchodilators like salbutamol, we need to avoid NSAIDs for them. There is another video on painkillers and what to prescribe for dental pain. I'm going to add the link on the top right corner of this screen. It will show up at some point, but we need to avoid NSAIDs for them, okay? The NSAID that is slightly better is the ibuprofen, but uh, check this video because there are some details about this as well. We also need to remember that asthma patients, they are more prone to have allergies. So then you're going to investigate a little bit further about allergies, okay? And don't forget to check this recommended reference, which is very important for this topic as well. All right, so now let's see the specific blood thinners. So we have warfarin, rivaroxaban, and they have some impacts here on our dental treatments. They may affect the bleeding control. So then, of course, you are going to check the INR of the patient if it's actually lower than 3.5. There are other articles describing other limits as well. You need to, to decide on an individual basis depending on the procedure that you need to do. And don't forget that they are usually given to treat cardiac conditions and these might affect your dental treatment. For example, they are given for patients with heart valves and then you need to apply antibiotic prophylaxis before surgical procedures, okay? So th there is also this possibility. And then this means that we need to take some precautions, all right? So you are going to assess this on an individual basis. Okay, let's check now steroids. So prednisolone is maybe the most common and they might have impacts, of course, in mood of suppression and then even steroid crisis or adrenal crisis with invasive procedures. So you are going to think twice before offering a multiple extraction procedure or a large surgical procedure for patients taking steroids because of medical treatment. And that means precautions. Now let's go for biphosphonates. We have uh, the alendronate or alendronic acid. Fosamax is the brand most common. Then we have uh, the zoledronic acid or zoledronate, which would be the zometa, that's infusion. Alendronate is tablets, of course. And you might find patients taking injections, the prolia, which is basically the denosumab, okay? That's not a biphosphonate, but it's here as well because it's also used in the treatment of osteoporosis, all right? So those uh, drugs are usually used to treat osteoporosis. Now, uh, they might lead to a risk of osteonecrosis. Why? They will lead to impaired wound healing, so they are already proven to be toxic for soft tissues. 
and then even the bone healing will be impaired and this might lead to osteonecrosis. Think twice before doing a surgery on these patients or maybe you can do the surgical procedure before the treatment of osteoporosis starts. So you need, if you, if you are not sure about what to do, always get in touch with the physician of the patient. That's very, very important, okay? This is also meaning that you are uh, taking care of the patient properly. Being in communication with the physician as a health science professional should be always. Now, statins, uh, we have simvastatin, we have rosuvastatin and atorvastatin, and then, of course, they are used to treat high cholesterol patients. However, they might have interaction with macrolides, so the antibiotic group of macrolides, we're talking about clarithromycin, erythromycin, and even azithromycin, so you need to make sure that you know about this interaction. And then, of course, since they have high cholesterol, maybe we are talking about patients that have cardiac risks. And then you need to take this into consideration as well. So always talk to the physician if you are not sure. That means precautions. All right, now we have the immunosuppressants. So those are common immunosuppressants. Uh, you guys are realizing that for the methotrexate, we have some drug interactions with NSAIDs and even with uh, penicillin, for example. So if the patient is taking those uh, medicine, then of course you are going to analyze this situation on an individual basis and not maybe prescribe those medicines. Don't forget that immunosuppressants, we are talking about, we may be talking about transplant patients and patients with autoimmune conditions. So now, you need to be careful if you're going to do a surgical procedure, for example. Then, of course, maybe you're going to choose a different type of flap or maybe you're going to decrease the size of flap or you're going to suture a little bit more. So you're going to make sure even more that the blood clot is forming after an extraction, for example. And those mean precautions that we are taking for these patients. Chemotherapy patients, and here we have something very important, they might have immunosuppression, they might have lack of control of bleeding, and then they even might have oral mucositis. Don't forget that uh, these patients, they also might be taking radiotherapy as well, and then we have higher risk of osteonecrosis. Chemotherapy and radiotherapy, they might lead to higher chances of osteonecrosis, and this is something that we need to take into consideration, just like the patients taken by phosphonates. Maybe they can start the chemotherapy after dental extractions, for example. So the physician would even refer the patient to you for uh, the extractions before the chemotherapy or radiotherapy treatments start. Okay, so this is also very important. That means precautions. So always check uh, about the, the medicine, the drugs that your patients are taking. Don't forget to read again about the most common examples of drugs that you're going to find in the medical history of your patients, and then you know that you are going to assess this on an individual basis and maybe change or adapt your dental treatment planning accordingly. Okay? If you guys like, please hit the like button and see you guys on the next videos.